Welcome to the Opportunity Zones podcast presented by OpportunityDB.com. I'm Jimmy Atkinson. And on today's episode, which cities have the largest number of Opportunity Zones? Today, I'm going to walk through the top cities that have the most Opportunity Zones using my website, OpportunityDB.com. We'll take a close look at the maps of many of these cities, highlighting where the Opportunity Zones are in some of our largest cities of note, some cities have high concentrations of opportunity zones in their downtown areas. Others have OZs in more residential areas outside of the main city center. We'll kind of take a look at each one of those uh, top cities, uh, but let's dive in. So I can share my screen here with you now, and I'm going to turn to my monitor here. And first, this is a list of the top 25 cities with the most opportunity zones. So they're ranked by how many opportunity zones they have. And then you have the population rank here in this column, which shows where the city ranks among the largest U.S. cities, the, the most populous U.S. cities. And then I also have a column here for the median household income. By the way, this table will be available on the show notes page for today's episode, which you can find at opportunitydb.com slash podcast. But taking a look through the, through the top 25 cities, one, two, and three should be no surprise. New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago, the most populous cities in the United States. Uh, but a little bit of a head scratcher here. You wouldn't think necessarily that San Juan, Puerto Rico is number four. It's the 57th most populous city in the United States, and yet it has 120 opportunity zones uh, only behind those top three cities and more than you know several more populous cities. In case you're unaware, Puerto Rico was granted a, a special rule that allowed them to designate uh, 100% of their low-income census tracts as opportunity zones. Uh, according to the statute, ordinarily, each state in the United States and overseas territory and the uh, District of Columbia was able to designate up to 25% of their low-income census tracts as opportunity zones or exactly 25 opportunity zones if, if the number of census tracts was uh, that met the criteria was less than 25. So each state in the country and each territory has uh, it, 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 uh, up to up to 25% of their low income census tracts designated as opportunity zones. Uh, but Puerto Rico is granted an exception to that rule in an effort to help catalyze uh, redevelopment and rehabilitation from the devastation brought on by Hurricane Maria and subsequent earthquakes that hit the island a few years ago, <clears throat> Congress made a special rule for them. They were able to designate 100% of their opportunity zones. So we actually do have quite a few Puerto Rican cities in the top 25, including San Juan here at number at number four, Bayamon at number eight. Um, let's see, Ponce at number 10, tied for 10 with Phoenix and Baltimore. Carolina, uh, number 18, and then Caguas, number 22, uh, I'm not going to go through all those Puerto Rican cities. When I pull up the map, I'll, I'll probably just go over Puerto Rico at large. But then rounding out the top 10, we have Houston, Philadelphia, Detroit, Cleveland, and then a tie for 10th place between Phoenix and Baltimore. So I'm going to go through the top 10 only. I'm going to kind of drill into the top 10. But outside of the top 10, we as we go through the rest of the top 25, I'll just kind of rattle them off quickly here. Fresno, California. Columbus, Ohio, San Diego, California, Indianapolis, Indiana, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Kansas City, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee, Oakland, California, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, St. Louis, Missouri, Atlanta, Georgia, and rounding out the top 25, Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, notably, more than half of the top 20 most populous U.S. cities are not on the above list. They actually don't have that many opportunity zones. Uh, San Antonio, Texas, the seventh largest city in the United States, uh, falls just outside the top 25. I, I think I had them slotted in around 26 or 27 or so. Um, and there's there are actually quite a few in Texas that are that are large cities, populous cities, but uh, don't have enough low income census tracts to put them into the top 25 most uh, most opportunity zones. Dallas is in there uh, at ninth. Austin at 11th and Fort Worth, my city where I live now, uh, 13th. Uh, other populous cities that 
don't make the top 25, uh, but are in the top 20 most populous U.S. cities include San Jose, California. Let's see. Jacksonville, Florida, Charlotte, North Carolina, San Francisco, California, very affluent area. Yeah, that shouldn't be a surprise. Seattle, Washington, Denver, Colorado, and Washington, D.C. also just barely falls outside of the top 25. They're, they're the 20th most populous U.S. city. Uh, they do have a fair amount of opportunity zones. But so we're going to drill in now to each one of these top 10 cities. We'll, we'll just cover uh, Puerto Rico briefly um, as, as one island. But let's move along now to our first city on the list, which is New York City, New York, New York home to 306 opportunity zones, by far the most number of opportunity zones in the country. I mean, it's an enormous city, population over 8 million. So the opportunity zones represent about 17% of the city's total population. And if we look at the five boroughs of New York, and I'll zoom into the map here um, in a little bit, let's actually zoom into the map right now a little bit. Um, there aren't a lot of opportunity zones in Manhattan and, and then Staten Island to the south here, not very populated. There are only a handful of uh, opportunity zones in Staten Island. The, the majority of the opportunity zones that you'll find in New York City are in Brooklyn and in the Bronx. And then there's a fair number in Queens as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of zoom into Manhattan here. You can see there really are not very many opportunity zones in midtown manhattan or lower manhattan um there, there's a there's a handful here there's there's four that touch lower manhattan here there's this one here in hell's kitchen but you really have to you know walk north of central park before you start getting into uh, where there are a considerable amount of opportunity zones in harlem and in upper manhattan and then uh across the harlem river here you do have quite a few in the Bronx. Um, scrolling down here now to, to Queens, which is home to both of New York's large airports. Uh, we've got JFK here on the south. There are quite a few opportunity zones immediately surrounding JFK. Um, up here, LaGuardia, really not very many opportunity zones up here in LaGuardia. There are um, couple of zones on either side of of Flushing Meadows where where the Mets play and where the US Open is played. Um, right here, Long Island City. This is a Long Island City opportunity zone. Uh, there are um, this was going to be uh, home to Amazon HQ2, but but those plans got scuttled at the last minute. But that that was a opportunity zone that was in the headlines for a while here. Coming down into Brooklyn now. Uh, quite a few opportunity zones in Brooklyn, as I mentioned before. Um, quite a few along the river here as well. And in in Williamsburg, you'll find quite a few opportunity zones by the Williamsburg Bridge and, and these other bridges here, the Manhattan Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge. You've got some opportunity zones adjacent to, to both of those areas as well. So that's a look at the map of New York City and where the opportunity zones are roughly, but, uh, you know, you can scroll down here on our website, by the way, <laughs> I should have mentioned this at the top. If you're listening to this episode on iTunes or Spotify or some other podcast listening app, I, I, I apologize to you. This is really more of a visual episode. If you want to get the full picture, uh, pun intended, you should head over to our YouTube channel right now. You can find us on youtube.com slash opportunity DB and find today's podcast episode on cities with the most opportunity zones and you'll really get a good visual of of what i'm showing on our website and the different maps but here's a list of all the uh, of all of new york city's opportunity zones and you can sort here by median household income there are quite a few opportunity zones where the household income is well north of a hundred thousand dollars um if legislation gets passed that would grandfather or not grandfather excuse me would uh sunset or disqualify early um, certain high income census tracts. You know, I think several of these would, would likely uh, be on the chopping block, but getting back to grandfathered um, just to be clear, if you have investments in any of these zones that do end up getting disqualified early, you, your investment is grandfathered in. So you're safe there. 
Again, that legislation is still pending, uh, but hopefully that gets passed sometime here in the next few months. But again, quite a few uh, tracks in New York City where the median household income is in the six figures and high median home values north of a million dollars or or getting close to a million dollars. You scroll through this list here. Here you can find the New York State average. Quite a few below there. I'm just going to kind of scroll through. And then uh, let's see, we're going to get to the New York State OZ average right here. 47K median household income. Quite a few south of that number, well north of 100 opportunity zones south of that number there. And again, most of these being located in either Kings County or Bronx County, Kings County being Brooklyn, a handful in uh, in New York County that would cover Manhattan and um, particularly upper Manhattan and, and, and Harlem. So that's a look at um, New York City, home to uh, 306 opportunity zones. But we'll, we'll move along now to uh, the second city on our list, which is also the second most populous city in the United States. And uh, that's my hometown of Los Angeles, California. I don't live there anymore, but I, I grew up there. And Los Angeles is home to 194 designated opportunity zones, covering roughly 20% of the city's total population, uh, about half the size of, of New York City, um, but nearly two thirds of the opportunity zones that New York City has. Just a huge area geographically, of course. And the median household income varies considerably. I'll scroll down to that list uh, when I get done scrolling through the map here. But let's take a look at where the opportunity zones are in Los Angeles. Uh, this area north of the city of Los Angeles here, um, north of the downtown area, I should say, but still part of the city of Los Angeles, the San Fernando Valley is home to roughly a third or so. I think it's about uh, 60 plus opportunity zones. Uh, I was counting manually the other day, r r roughly 60 or so opportunity zones in the San Fernando Valley area here. Um, a couple in Silmar, California here. These are these northernmost opportunity zones. We had one of the OZ Pitch Day partners with us, uh, Zbeck Realty, presented their soundstage studio deal, which was located up here. I, I'm not sure which of these zones it was in, but definitely up here in Silmar, the two northernmost zones in Los Angeles. And then moving along down here, once you get outside of the valley, um, you come down south of Glendale, south of Pasadena, and, and you hit um, you hit Hollywood right here, this area adjacent to Beverly Hills. I don't think there's any opportunity zones in Beverly Hills, but uh, the area just east of Beverly Hills um, in Hollywood and South Hollywood has quite a few zones here. Uh, including um, one of these here. I think it might be this one or this one. I could zoom in and find out is home to the Dolby Theater and Grauman's or, or now Mann's Chinese Theater. Uh, Dolby Theater, really in the heart of Hollywood. Dolby Theater is where they have the Academy Awards every year. So um, there, there is some some impoverished areas, but it's uh, it's kind of a mix. It's uh, It's a juxtaposition of kind of the ritz and glamour of of Hollywood with some impoverished neighborhoods immediately surrounding that area. If if you've ever been there, I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm talking about now. Downtown Los Angeles, um, not a whole lot of opportunity zones in the heart of downtown, um, but you do have some opportunity zones to the east and in East LA and quite a few in South LA as well coming down this corridor here. Um, dotted throughout South LA, really, and you know, formerly known as South Central LA. So that's a that's a look at the the map of LA and where the opportunity zones lie there. And we had a few in in Hollywood and and a, and quite a few in the San Fernando Valley as well. Uh, a list of the opportunity zones in Los Angeles. You can see I'll sort this by median household income descending. Um, only a couple of zones are above the statewide average in terms of median household income, only one zone with median household income at the six figure level. And then uh, the vast majority of them though, do fall below the statewide average. And then we keep scrolling down here. We'll, we will eventually get to the statewide OZ average. Here's the statewide OZ average, 44,000 
median household income. And then we do see uh, the bulk of them well below the the average median household income for OZs, which means that, you know, of all of the opportunity zones in California, those that are in Los Angeles are likely below average median household income uh, of those OZs. Quite a few opportunity zones in the state of California has the most opportunity zones in the country. Um, I believe there are more than 800 I don't have that information in my fingertips, but I believe there's more than 800 opportunity zones in the state of California. And, um, you know, uh, about a fifth of them are in the Los Angeles area. So that's a look at Los Angeles. Move along now to our third most populous city in the United States. And it has the third most opportunity zones in the country, Chicago, Illinois. Um, so Chicago is really interesting, actually, whereas we saw with, with, um, with Los Angeles, there are you know, zones spread throughout the area and in in New York City as well, zones all over the map. Chicago, there is nothing downtown and there's nothing um, on the north. This city really is um, quite interesting in that the, the wealth is concentrated almost exclusively in the city center or the loop as it's called and and north of of there so you see we go north of downtown chicago north of the loop there is no opportunity zones here all of the opportunity zones 100 percent of chicago's opportunity zones are concentrated on the west side and in south side chicago so west chicago you really do have to get west of um of where the united center is united center is around here somewhere you got to get west of Dan Ryan Expressway uh, before you start running into some opportunity zones out in these areas here. And then, you know, coming down south side Chicago, you start hitting them once you get into Bronzeville area. Uh, we have had a OZ pitch day partner, um, Eagle OZ, which is presented a few times on our pitch day. They invest in uh, residential developments on in Chicago South Side, primarily in in the Bronzeville community, um, of note, Obama's Presidential Library is down here and is adjacent to an Opportunity Zone down here um, on the South Side along the the Lakeshore here, and then you know continuing on south down the Skyway all the way down until you get to East Chicago. There are plenty of Opportunity Zones dotting the map here of Chicago. Uh, if we want to list all of the Chicago Opportunity Zones now, we get to um, 135, the list of 135 zones in Chicago, Illinois. I'll sort by median household income now. And you really do have um, no Opportunity Zones that are north of $100,000. And the vast majority of them, save one, uh, has median household income below the statewide average. This is OZs and non-OZs, this first statewide average here, all of Illinois. And then you get down... Let's find the OZ average. Here's the Illinois OZ average at 31,000 median household income. You know, well more than half of these uh, are, are going to be south of that number. A lot of impoverished areas in Chicago, particularly concentrate on the, on the south side of Chicago. So that's a good look at Chicago there. Uh, we'll move on now to, I think, Puerto Rico is next on the list. Yeah, so we, we've got San Juan, Puerto Rico. And we actually had, I think it was five cities in the top 25 that are in Puerto Rico. Um, two of them, well, three of them, I guess. So, so we're talking about San Juan. And then the other two of the other five were Bayamon and Carolina, which are adjacent to San Juan. So I'll kind of take a look at all three of those areas. Because <laughs> frankly, there's not a whole lot to look at here. Um, it, it might be more important to point out which areas of the map are not in an opportunity zone for Puerto Rico. I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. But uh, just to kind of recap, there's 120 opportunity zones in San Juan. If this city didn't have that uh, that exception to the 25% rule, you know, you might see closer to 30 designated opportunity zones, which would probably still put it in the top 25, uh, which is impressive because I think it's only the 50 or something largest city in the U.S., there, there's quite a bit of uh, low-income census tracts in the city of San Juan and all over Puerto Rico, but 
um, you know, close to 100% of the population of the island and close to 100% of the population of San Juan lies in an opportunity zone. But uh, Bayamon is down here and then Carolina over here. And then this is this is San Juan here. So these three cities, I mean, it's a large San Juan metropolitan area, essentially. If you want to include <coughs> Carolina and Bayamon, you, you're probably getting close to 200 designated opportunity zones in you know, the greater San Juan area. Um, then you can see, I'll zoom out all the way to, let me zoom into the map, but then zoom out the map. Uh, you've got the entire island of Puerto Rico comes into view now, and you can see really nearly the entire island that I've heard 98%, 95%, 99%, depending on how you slice and dice it, <coughs> of the island lies within an opportunity zone. So zooming back in now, um, oh, I did want to point out uh, Ponce was also in the top 25. And then um, what was that other one? <clears throat> Caguas, which is down in this area somewhere is also. Yeah, here, here's Caguas right here. Really only a couple of neighborhoods in Caguas, which are not in an opportunity zone, a couple of pockets here. But if you're looking to develop in Puerto Rico or you're looking to... Uh, to invest in Puerto Rico, a lot of opportunity there. And then on top of the opportunity zones incentive, Puerto Rico also gives you access to multiple tax credit programs that are offered by the Puerto Rican government. Um, there's relocation tax credits. If you want to relocate down there, there's tourism tax credits um, that you can take advantage of as well. If, if you're building hospitality assets, there's uh, really quite a bit going on down there. But we'll, we'll zoom into San Juan for a minute. There's really only a couple of areas that aren't in an opportunity zone. Um, this area of Condado right here, quite um, quite affluent area. Uh, a lot of luxury hotels, a lot of tourism in this area here along this main stretch, along the Laguna and here along the uh, the Caribbean coast. But you know, San Juan, old San Juan right here is almost entirely covered as opportunity zone. I mean, the, I think the only areas that aren't covered are this airport right here and then a couple of um, state historic parks where there's no residents. So I'm not even sure if those are census tracts or not. And then moving along to Carolina, the, the airport does not lie in a zone. There's no residents there, but the area immediately to the east and to the south of the airport are our opportunity zones um this part of carolina though is not more affluent area right here just west of the big international airport so that's a that's a good look at um at puerto rico the map there in terms of median household income it's very low compared to the mainland um nothing even approaching six figures the highest Median household income tract in all of San Juan is merely sixty-two thousand dollars. Home value of two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. Let's scroll through here and see if we can find our averages. So the Puerto Rico OZ average is twenty-three k. We do have quite a few in San Juan north of that number, but um, I think the majority will be south of that number there. <clears throat> when we get down as low as two thousand, three thousand, you know, well under ten k for. A handful of these tracts here. So suffice it to say, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and, and Puerto Rico as a whole, a lot of a whole lot of opportunity zones in that part of the country. Uh let's move on now to the where are we at now? I think this is the fifth most opportunity zones. Number five on the list is Houston, Texas. Home to nearly 100 opportunity zones. We've got 97 opportunity zones in Houston. And you can see they're largely concentrated here in, in the city center on the, on the east side, a little to the north, a little bit to the south. Got a couple of pockets here on the west and, and on the northwest, but the vast majority of them really centering along the city center here. I'll zoom in, Let's zoom in on the screen here too. Zoom into the uh, the city of Houston here. Uh, Minute Maid Park, where the Astros play, lies in an opportunity zone. Uh, this area down here, one of these census tracts has um, Energy Park and Energy Field, Energy Stadium, I should say. And the old Astrodome is down here 
as well. This is where the Houston Texans play football. All of that area, including the stadium and and the surrounding neighborhoods around the stadium, lie in opportunity zones. Downtown Houston city center, primarily opportunity zone land. You got a couple pockets here that aren't, but the vast majority of Houston's main downtown area, especially to the the eastern part of downtown, lies in an opportunity zone. And then quite a few residential areas north and and into the south. And again, some pockets here on the west and and northwest. Oh, University of Houston, let's see, I think is right here. There's a little pocket of the University of Houston that's not in an opportunity zone, I was noticing. Um, Yeah, here's here's most of the University of Houston's campus right here. But the, the areas, the student housing immediately surrounding that area is located in an opportunity zone. We could probably spend an entire episode just looking at the different universities around the country. Maybe I'll do that someday uh, because it is kind of interesting where a lot of the opportunity zones lie on college campuses or just off of college campuses um, where the students technically are low income, even though oftentimes they come from rather affluent backgrounds. Um, But that's another conversation for another day. But there are a lot of opportunities to, to do development in and around college campuses with opportunity zones. So a list of the Houston Opportunity Zones, again, there's 97 of them. Um, well, it looks like they're all south of six figures. This one just barely coming in at 99K. Uh, a handful of them are north of the statewide average for Texas, but the vast majority of them fall below that number. Here's the Texas OZ average at 38,000. And you can see um, Harris County, Houston, Texas, most of the Opportunity Zones in Houston lie below this statewide opportunity zone average of 38k so that's uh that's our look at houston moving along now to number six on the list is philadelphia pennsylvania with 82 opportunity zones quite a few opportunity zones in the city of brotherly love uh representing about 19 percent of the city's total population zooming into the map here uh, take a look and point out a couple things about Philadelphia that I find a little bit interesting. Um, so first of all, South Philly, almost nothing in South Philly. Um, where the Eagles play football is is down here, I think, if I recall correctly. I've never been to Philadelphia, actually, so you have to forgive me if I misspeak, but only a handful of opportunity zones here south of the city center Really not a lot going on in South Philly. You've got a few pockets of opportunity zones here. Um, on the west side of Philadelphia, you have quite a few opportunity zones west of the river here. And then downtown Philadelphia, really not a lot in the main city center of Philadelphia. You do have this one opportunity zone here in the city center. Um, this is where their Chinatown is. So you do have one opportunity zone in Chinatown here. Um, I should note that these areas uh, east of Philadelphia here, east of this river are in New Jersey. So lie outside of the city of Philadelphia, but they do kind of touch upon and lead up into this North Philadelphia area, which is where most of the opportunity zones lie is really outside of the city center going North into North Philly and uh, West Philly over here in this area. Um you know, one thing I wanted to know when I was looking at the map of Philadelphia, um, Independence Hall, does that lie in an opportunity zone? No, it doesn't. Independence Hall is around this area here, does not lie in an opportunity zone. All of these areas here, um, the main downtown area and, and where the Liberty Bell is, not an opportunity zone. What about the Rocky Steps? I did find out that the Rocky Steps are just barely in an opportunity zone. I think it's this one right here. You can see a uh, opportunity zone kind of cuts right through right in front of the steps here. So once you get to the bottom of the steps and you cross the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, you're no longer in an opportunity zone. But but this area here, um, the the Philadelphia Museum of Art and the steps do lie in a zone which actually somewhat gerrymandered fashion that <laughs> does stretch pretty far north and west away from that area and and covers mostly these uh this residential area uh west of the river here so that's philadelphia that's the map of philadelphia um again 
about 19% of the city's population of Philadelphia lives in an opportunity zone. If I can sort by median household income now, nothing north of 100K, a handful of tracts that do lie above the statewide average. And then we get to the statewide OZ average, $36,000 median household income. You have the vast majority of Philadelphia's opportunity zones lie below that statewide opportunity zone average. We get to, I think we're number seven on the list now, Detroit, Michigan, a city that's uh, lost a lot of population over the last 50 to 100 years or so. Um, but it's uh, it's home to a lot of opportunity zones, despite being, let me go back to our main um, our main table here. Yeah, we are at number seven with Detroit. It's the 27th most populous city. So really outside of Puerto Rico, this is like the first city that's way outside of the top 10 that is in the top 10. And it's at number 27. Again, it's lost a lot of population over the years. And its median household income is is quite low as well. Um, Only slightly higher than Chicago. But let's get back to Detroit now. Close these guys here. We'll get to Detroit, Michigan. Um, interestingly, a lot of Detroit's opportunity zones, and I had Jed Halbert on the show, um, a few weeks back, he's developing in Detroit, Michigan. And, and we were actually looking at the map at one point during the episode. And I pointed out, and actually, I think that was served as the inspiration for today's episode. Uh, unlike a lot of other cities, certainly unlike Chicago, um, another huge, great Midwest city. Detroit's opportunity zones are concentrated primarily in the city center and a lot of riverfront, uh, waterfront opportunity zones as well along this border with Windsor, Ontario, uh, heading into Canada. One of the few places where you can be in the United States and you have to drive south to get into Canada from Detroit, Michigan. Kind of a fun fact there. But you can see all of these all of these zones highly concentrated in the main city downtown core right here of Detroit, Michigan. You get right into downtown Detroit, right in the heart of downtown. You can walk for blocks and blocks and blocks in any direction without leaving an opportunity zone. Contrast that with Chicago, where we saw zero opportunity zones in their downtown loop area. Ford Field, where the Detroit Lions play, opportunity zone and you know every location in any direction around uh, Ford Field is in an opportunity zone as well. So 70 opportunity zones. Again, the vast majority of them concentrated right around the city center here. You got a few on the outskirts as well in the more suburban parts of the city, but you got the vast majority of them uh, right in downtown. And and again, quite a few on the water too. A a lot of this waterfront is opportunity zone area. And, you know, Detroit was already starting to revitalize a little bit before opportunity zones took shape. And, uh, you know, the hope here is that by designated so many of these opportunity zones um, at the state level, right in the city of Detroit, hopefully brings more revitalization to the Motor City. We'll look at um, some of the facts here. 22% of the city's population live in an opportunity zone. So it covers quite a bit of the the residents of Detroit. (laughs) And then sort this table by median household income. Wayne County, Detroit, home to Detroit, I'm sorry, Wayne County, Michigan, home to Detroit. Uh, The vast majority of them do lie below the statewide average. We've got a, what was it? Five of them above the statewide average, nothing above $100,000 a year in median household income. And then here's the Michigan Opportunity Zone average, 33K. Quite a few zones in Detroit that fall below that figure there. So that's Detroit, Michigan. That was our seventh uh, city with the seventh most opportunity zones in the country. Number eight on the list is another Midwest city that uh, you might not expect to find on this list. It's the 54th most populous city in the United States. Uh, But there with 48 opportunity zones, it it ranks number nine on our opportunity zone list, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to visit Cleveland, Ohio last fall for the Novogratic Fall Opportunity Zone Conference in 2021. Um, And coincidentally, happily, it it landed on um, a date where the Cleveland Browns were in town. So I know a lot of us and probably many of my listeners um, 
listening today or watching today were at that game with me or or at the game at least in uh for that opportunity zone conference that was a fun time but a cleveland again a lot like detroit a lot of opportunity zones right in the heart of the city you get right to the middle of downtown cleveland and the public square here and first energy stadium where the browns play it's all an opportunity zone and if you you know get right into the middle of downtown and walk in any direction for blocks and blocks and blocks and you're going to find yourself in an opportunity zone you come down south here to where jacobs field is or i forget the name of it now but where the cleveland indians play that is also in an opportunity zone um you got this stretch here coming down interstate 77 on either side which is not opportunity zone area but the vast majority of the of the city it seems at least the the downtown part of the city uh is an opportunity zone so a lot of opportunity there and a lot of a lot of waterfront also um along the lake here plenty of opportunity zones to the just to the east of of downtown cleveland and and to the south of downtown cleveland as well um represents about 25 percent of the city's total population the opportunity zones there come along down to the list of opportunity zones there's 48 of them in the city of cleveland in cuyahoga county Nothing north of 100K, only three of them above the statewide average of 59,000 uh, median household income. And let's see, here's the Ohio Opportunity Zone average is at 30,000, pretty low number there. And we've got quite a few Opportunity Zones in Cleveland that fall well below that number. And even a few that are below, a couple here that are below $10,000 median household income. So uh, a lot of opportunity here in Cleveland, 48 designated opportunity zones uh we're getting toward the end of our list now i think we've got uh we're going to cover phoenix and baltimore as well before i get there though just kind of interesting about the state of ohio ohio placed three cities in the top 25 the 54th most populous city cleveland came in at number nine uh columbus ohio the 14th most populous city and one of the fastest growing parts of the midwest and indeed parts of the country columbus uh 14th most populous city is also the city with the 14th most opportunity zones at 38 and then finally last but not least on this list here number 25 the 66th most populous city cincinnati ohio with 26 opportunity zones makes it the city with the 25th most opportunity zones in the country so interesting three from the state of ohio uh ohio is also unique in that the state of ohio offers on top of the federal tax incentive and on top of the state tax incentive that opportunity zones provide they also give you a 10 percent tax credit for doing opportunity zone development anywhere in the state of ohio so that's a little bit about ohio there i'll get to phoenix arizona now phoenix home to 42 designated opportunity zones and, and what is phoenix phoenix is tied for 10th with baltimore and then we already covered Ponce. So I'll cover Phoenix and Baltimore tied for 10th. And that'll round out today's episode. Each of these with 42 opportunity zones. Phoenix, you would expect to find on the list of the fifth most populous city in the nation. And uh, certainly one of the fastest growing cities as well. Stretching over to Scottsdale here, we've got a, a couple of opportunities on Scottsdale. But again, we'll zoom in primarily to the, to the city center here, the heart of downtown Phoenix quite a few opportunity zones right in downtown phoenix here um one of our oz pitch day partners cre development capital is developing a fairmont hotel and residences right in the heart of phoenix across the street from uh, the arena where the where the phoenix suns play right in downtown phoenix here here's uh chase field where the diamondbacks play and Let's see, forgive me. I'm not exactly sure where the arena is, the basketball arena. I think it's here it is. Talking Stick Arena is located, yeah, just a few blocks west of Chase Field. So this is the arena district here. It's all located in Opportunity Zone. And then the convention center is I think, I think this might be the convention center right here. Here's the Arizona Center. There's there's some convent. Let me let me zoom in here one more time. Yeah, here's the convention center. I was right. The convention center is right across the street from the arena district. So quite a bit of activity happening here, quite a bit of opportunity 
in downtown Phoenix to develop. It's interesting that this is all opportunity zone areas. You know, a lot of the uh, areas <clears throat> surrounding this arena and convention district is rather impoverished and is in need of rehabilitation, redevelopment. So that is coming slowly but surely to these areas of downtown Phoenix. And then kind of zooming out, you get quite a few uh, really dotted all over Phoenix to the north, to the west, to the east. There's really not a huge concentration in one any particular location. You come over here to uh, Glendale, um, which is where the Arizona Cardinals play. You got a, a handful of opportunity zones in Glendale as well. I think that's actually outside of the city of Phoenix proper, but um, worth mentioning. So Phoenix, Arizona, for the most part, not a lot of opportunity zones uh, considering how populous the area is. Fifth most populous city in the country, but only the 10th most in terms of number of opportunity zones. And, you know, as such, only 10% of the population lives in one of these opportunity zones in Phoenix. We will take a look at the table now of the 42 opportunity zones in Phoenix, a couple of them coming up uh, north of the statewide average, 65, 64K, statewide average being 62K, median household income, uh, nothing north of 100K for Phoenix. We saw a few in LA and in, in New York that were north of 100K. We haven't seen a lot since then. Um, and then here's the Arizona statewide opportunity zone average, 37,000. Um, it looks like a little more than half are below that number, but a fair, fair number above that number as well. So that's Phoenix, Arizona. And that brings us to our last city in the top 10, which is Baltimore, Maryland to round out today's episode. Um, Baltimore, you can see kind of a concentration, um, or I should say not a concentration, really a smattering of opportunity zones, um, all around Baltimore. They've got some on the North side, some on to the east, some to the south, some to the west, some downtown. Did a fairly good job of uh, of splitting up where there's opportunity zones are. You see different states and different cities have different, um, first of all, different demographics, geographic demographics in terms of where their impoverished areas are or where they are not. Um, that was the case with Chicago, where there was nothing on the north side, everything or nothing in the loop either. Everything was to the west and to the south. Baltimore, really a uh, pretty good smattering of opportunity zones all around the city, downtown area and, and the outskirts of the city as well. <clears throat> so Baltimore, their 42 opportunity zones cover about 19 percent of the total city's population. Uh, the median household income, quite a wide range. We do have one that's above one hundred thousand dollars. That's the only one that's above the statewide average of 87,000. And then where is the Maryland opportunity zone average? So Maryland statewide opportunity zone average household income is $39,000. And the I would say, yeah, the vast majority of opportunity zones in Baltimore lie south of that number uh, below 39,000. We do get as low as 13,000, but as high as 104,000. So a very wide range there. Uh, and that is a look at Baltimore. So that rounds out the top 10. Um, had quite a few cities that um, that we didn't get to, but I will be sure to link to this page on our show notes for today's episode. You can find those show notes at opportunitydb.com slash podcast. We'll have this list of the top 25 cities with the most opportunity zones. And you can also visit opportunitydb.com slash location to get a list of opportunity zones by state. I'll head over there very briefly right now. We can just kind of look through uh, the state list. So this is an alphabetized list of every state and overseas territory in the United States. Uh, the District of Columbia is on here as well. I think, it's, I think it goes by Washington, D.C. on our list, uh, but you can see the number of opportunity zones in every single state and how they were designated, whether they were low income tracts or non low income contiguous tracts. And you can click on any one of these locations here. I'll go to Texas since that's where I am with 628 opportunity zones. And you can see a map of Texas. And then we'll have a list of all the funds that have some exposure to Texas all of the qualified opportunity funds with exposure to Texas. And then here's a list of every single 
opportunity zone in the state of Texas by county. So that's just a little bit of a flavor, a little bit more of what you can do um, on our website at opportunitydb.com. But again, if you're looking for show notes for today's episode, for everybody listening or, or watching today, please check out those show notes, opportunitydb.com slash podcast. We'll have the list of the top 25 cities. And again, that was opportunitydb.com slash location to see a list of every opportunity zone by state. Please be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube or your favorite podcast listening platform to always get the latest episodes. Thanks for watching.